Hi guys, DefFX Hunter here with my Sunday's Forex Market Preview. Uh, we're gonna have a look uh, for the past month uh, for the trades which we had in our Signal channel. Uh, we will look at them uh, more deeply. Uh, we will look uh, what was the mistakes, uh, what we can what we can improve for the next time, and uh, I will speak a little bit about the uh, uh, money management uh, because this is very important as we closed. Uh, uh, the month uh, in the negative we close it with minus six pips <laughs> sometimes happen but um, I want to show you how important it is uh, uh, to use the money management because uh, we cannot be winning always and uh, you will see some interesting statistics uh, uh, which I prepared for you so let's have a look uh, what's gonna be next weekend we will have a from Monday a construction PMI on the GBP there will be central bank uh, speaking uh, the the Spencer from for the New Zealand, New, Zealand, New, Zealand, New Zealand dollar sorry as well there will be a lot of news uh, for the Australian uh, dollar which I expect uh, uh, to be strengthening then uh, we will have uh, non-farm pay payroll uh, change uh, at the Wednesday as well there will be uh, Bank of Canada rate statement and uh, overnight rate and crude oil inventories it's, I expect it's gonna be moving on the Canadian dollar and uh, we will have a druggy Thursday and the Friday will be a uh, non-farm payrolls so there could be some um, nice volatility so let's see and uh, now let's have a look uh, uh, for the trades uh, which we had so uh, we actually started uh, traded a little bit later we, we didn't trade the whole month we started at, at the 12th uh, and the 12th and uh, our first trade was uh, Australian dollar uh, I have uh, this uh, interesting tab which I prepared as well so here's all my trades uh, with the profits, uh, with the stop uh, or with the, with the losses and uh, here is a very interesting uh, uh, very interesting excel sheet it's comparison if, if uh, what would be a loss or profit if I uh, risk 1.5% uh, per, per trade or if I use still same position but I will be speak about it lately and uh, you will see something interesting so this was our trade uh, on the Australian dollar um, uh, I was expecting to rebound uh, in this 0 0.76 area from this whole number. I was expecting to rebound, but uh, they went a little bit lower, so and uh, they rebounded here. Um, there was a mistake. Uh, the stop loss was very tight. It was just of 64 pips, you know. Uh, my rule is that I mostly put the put the stop loss uh, below the next low, which should be which should be this one and the and the half number. So the stop loss should be placed as this one is. Yeah. So the stop loss should be here, and uh, then the market would have uh, enough space to do this movement and continue back. So. Uh, we get the stop loss, we learned some lesson and uh, we can continue with the trade. Actually the take profit could be, I think it could be even more higher somewhere here, but uh, uh, I decided that um, I will not be targeting uh, so big trades because it's mostly leads uh, that, uh, that that there's happening some um, corrections and then we closing uh, the smaller profits. So. I will be targeting what is this pips? So this is 200 pips, yeah. Okay, so I said I will, I will be you not know, targeting too big ones, but the 200 pips, okay, 200 pips, it's not too big movement, yeah. So I will be this is what I'm gonna do now, yeah. So then we cancelled couple trades. Uh, this Euro GBP, this is a shame because uh, um, actually I cancelled the trade. Uh, here I and here I put the pending order and here I cancel it and there you can see we could have a nice movement but uh, this is uh, you know to speaking about what could be what what we could do uh, it's uh, it's uh, wasting the time because it could but it didn't happen so you know if if I know that uh, Bitcoin will be 12,000 today uh, if I knew it like a couple years ago I would buy 100 bitcoins here yeah, when it was 20 so but I didn't know that so and I didn't did it so so it doesn't happen so we don't speak about the trades which didn't happen then the GBP USD uh, GBP USD here I enter it uh, because of the price bullish price section and uh, 
um, my targets was actually actually here yeah uh, on the one 136 but I closed the trades earlier because I thought uh, the market will be uh, will be going uh, back down and as well it happened uh, um, which I closed partially here and I put the put, move the stop loss here which was the mistake uh, I should uh, let it breathe and uh, and I should keep the keep the first stop of our stop loss here and uh, let let the market run up. Um, but uh, I will be planning to re-enter the market again because uh, now should come some correction, and I will be looking for the enter the trade again. Uh, USD chef trades. Uh, this was pretty good trades here. Uh, we entered uh, on the highs, on the correction high. This is nice entry. This is what I like. Uh, to entry the market like this and we closed the trades here but the take profit uh, take profit uh, was uh, targeted uh, lower as well uh, take profits was uh, somewhere here around 0 0.96 0 0.95 and then um, yeah we closed the trades uh, I want to then I will speak about why I closed the trades earlier uh, because it all has uh, something in common with the psychology and uh, I'm human as well and sometimes uh, when, we, when we're losing we are under the pressure so this is happening but um, I was I learned a lot from that Euro JPY we had nice trade here 179 pips uh, then I moved the stop loss to the entry and the uh, market come for that so we get a, we get one stop loss, but the average is like every uh, 70 pips. Now I enter trade again here on the highs, which was pretty nice entry. This is what I like to entry on the top and uh, waiting for the drop, uh, which I think will be happening. So we will take uh, back our profit. But uh, overall, uh, the Euro JPY doesn't look so bearish for me anymore because as you can see here's these pins. So I think uh, uh, Euro JPY will have a very tough game to, to uh, very tough war to. It's gonna be very difficult for them to break uh, break below. I think so. Um, let's see, let's see. But I will definitely close the part of profit somewhere around around uh, the low of this range, and then uh, rest I will I will I will, I will let run uh, down. Uh, then Euro USD. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was our hedging trade. I just uh, what I did. Uh, uh, I opened the sell here, and then uh, the market was going up uh, very sharply. So what I did, uh, I actually moved the stop loss uh, of this. Uh, I actually removed the stop loss of this sell trade, and then I hedged the trades. So if if it would go up very much, then I would uh, then I would uh, close uh, the trades uh, in the loss. Uh, which is actually the same as you put the stop loss, but it, it's uh, actually something like a flexible stop loss. So then, uh, then we close the trade. The market is uh, now looks like uh, this price section looks bearish. So we will see if it will go down. Cut Swiss franc again. This was a very nice trade. Um, we entered here. And we had uh, we had 140 pips in average. We had one trade, uh, 112 pips, and another 175. Nicely closed it on the low, and then uh, market is reversing. So this is nice trade. This one, I wish all of them would be like this. Yeah, GBP out. This is where we where we uh, get the first our first big stop loss. Uh, actually, big. Um, yeah 140 pips uh, with these trades when this happened I was actually sitting by in front of the on in front of the my screens and what I saw that happened here when they actually entered I will put on the five minutes so we can see it more clearly uh, I was actually thinking to close the trade uh, because uh, yeah market went up yeah and then uh, happened this this big pin bar uh, and the volume was rising and when I saw it saw this on the one minute chart even on the one minute 
yeah look at this this bam this uh, when the market drops rapidly like this and it start to reverse it's mostly the could be after this um, after this sharp move and this this means that this is uh, the the bullish activity and uh, I was sitting in front of the screen and I was thinking I should close these trades I should close them it's because the same thing happened on the GBP New Zealand dollar yeah you see completely almost almost same scenario uh, so so uh, I should close I should I think I should close these trades uh, I should uh, react uh, I should react more more uh, more flexible I should be more more fast but uh, yeah we let it run and uh, we get uh, the 300 almost 300 pip stop loss here um, yeah and then uh, we had uh, we had another trade euro new zealand dollar here it was minus 100 pips stop loss here here the mistake was uh, i don't know why i entered it so soon because uh, i there should the entry should be here on the top you know like a three touches and bam down but uh, i was thinking the market is uh, uh, looked for me very uh, in that now it's yeah okay now it's very easy uh, to say I should do this I should do that but uh, before it looks different for me and I thought the market will not uh, go up which happened but uh, and we get the stop loss yes USD cut uh, this was nice trade uh, 135 pips uh, the Canadian dollar have a very positive uh, news, uh, had a very positive news on a Friday, so it's uh, now a little bit strengthening. But overall, I expect uh, it go to go to that uh, the Canadian dollar should go much higher. But uh, I will see. I will probably remove this uh, this trade a little bit lower, or maybe I will first uh, enter the short and then uh, we will take a long. Outcat um, Outcat Yeah, we entered the trade here on the low This was a long trade. It was uh, uh, actually almost Almost two weeks in this trade and this this pair wasn't moving at all and So we closed part of the profit here in the 0, 0 0.975 area and now it's market dropping so uh, i think the canadian canadian dollar is strengthening so we will probably get the this locked stop loss here and i will be looking for the shorts here so uh i was wrong i don't think that the market will go up anymore but uh, i think they will come uh, they will come they will make some correction and continue sell so hopefully we could close uh, this trade uh, somewhere in profit in uh, around 0 0.974 if not we will get uh, this lock stop loss and we will not lose any money gotcha we saw we saw yeah and you're out uh, yeah another stop loss uh, 179 pips okay okay guys now i want to show you something yes uh so um you all, you all know that i'm always speaking about uh, uh money management how important it is to calculate uh, the position size yeah uh, i know it's very difficult uh, to do it before every trade even when you have it uh, when you do it on the phone uh, when you're not sitting by the computer but it's very important i will show you something so uh, here uh, i wrote the pips yeah which the pips uh, which uh, uh, I was in the profit or loss yeah and the next one next stop is uh, the average why average because uh, for example if I closed the trades uh, on the GBP USD one was 178 pips and second one was 155 pips but it was actually the uh, part positions closed so the average is actually 163 pips yeah this is what i was talking about uh, in the channel that uh, other other signals providers they will tell you uh, 178 pips plus 155 pips yeah and they will tell you that the profit is actually 320 pips yeah same same they could uh, do here with the usd chef one trade 121 pips and at 100 pips so the average is 109 yeah and in other signals you would receive uh, 220 pips yeah so 
this is actually not true but I'm, I'm doing this so I'm doing the average if I close some trade uh, partially somewhere uh, I calculate the pips uh, uh, as an average as an average uh, profit because uh, this is important for me you know I don't want to I don't want to manipulate numbers uh, for me because uh, if I will be manipulating uh, numbers I will be lying to myself and I could not be improving myself yeah so this is why and uh, so this next up is uh, the profit in the money or profit or losses because we had a losses as well if I uh, uh, so this is profit in the money with the risk one and a half percent per trade and this second one is uh, if I use the same position size 0.20 which is uh, the position size which I could be using with my account but uh, this is not money management if you're using still same position size this is not money management you always must know the risk per trade you always must know what you what you're risking and uh, you should be always uh, risking the same same account size uh, same size which I actually wasn't because uh, as you can see my uh, my losses should be all all losses should be same sizes and uh, they are not they are these three are a little bit same because there I was using the uh, the manage management and the rest ones are a little bit smaller because uh, you know sometimes when uh, when the when the stop loss is big uh, big I mean when the stop loss is more than 200 pips what I do I risk even less for the trade yes so you can see here in the in the history so this is actually this all has to be same for me to create this uh, this stop so actually even um, and now i want to show you this what's happening yes yeah? so we started to trade we have a first stop loss uh out usd then we had the free cancel trades then we had the free free take profits some nice profits yeah then we have uh, two cancel trades then uh, some small profit and then now i want to show you this watch this what uh, I just uh, name this uh, areas, yeah. So this this one it's uh, like a normal trading, yeah. We are we having uh, some kind of one stop loss, some cancel trades, then some profits. Very nice. This is very comfortable. But then what's happening from the from this trade uh, in this area, yeah. So look, we had uh, two cancel trades, then one small profit, and then one loss, one cancel trade, one loss, one loss. Okay, if I'm risking. Uh, if I'm risking a small volume or if I'm calculating the prof, uh, risk, it's okay. Yeah, so the, the, here you can see that uh, the, the losses are not so big. But if I will be trading with the same position size and I don't know what I'm risking because I'm still putting the same position, whatever is uh, stop loss, then look at this. Look at this. How big the loss could be. It's like $282. Five hundred eighty-two dollars, one hundred ninety-six dollars. Yeah. So then I'm actually then I'm actually losing more than I win before. Yeah. You see. What and what 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 would you do in this uh, in this uh, in this stage in this critical period? You would you will stop the trading. You will because uh, if you lose one thousand dollars or euros or whatever is your account. In couple trades, then other trades are cancelled. Then, then the other open the trades are in loss. It will totally psycho. It will destroy you. It will put you down, and uh, you will not. You will not. What you, you will not want to continue in a trading. You will. You will want to stop uh, the trading. But uh, one thing is important. You cannot stop because if uh, even if you're losing, it's always uh, there is uh, opportunities on the market. If you're losing, there's even more opportunities because that means that the market is moving some direction and you must re-enter the market again. But uh, if I lost one thousand uh, dollar uh, or euros, I would not do it. I would stop and I wouldn't see. I will not want to see the forex for um, at least uh, for two weeks. And what is all I would do? I would say, like, oh, what, what the fuck is this Dave, Dave Hunter or whatever he is? You're fucking losing. I'm leaving the signal. That's what I would say. Yeah. And then what happened? Then what happened? Even me, even uh, even uh, me, if uh, and uh, I knew that uh, I'm using the money management and I know that in the long run uh, the strategy is good and I will win money back. What I started to do? 
I started to close closing profits because I was losing and I wanted to bring the money home so I started closing the profits yes in the trades so which could run more for the more profits so uh, the position sizing is very important because uh, we will not be winning always no one is always winning no one and who said that yes it's liar there will be stages uh, where we when we lose the money but uh, very important is uh, what you lose when you lose and what you win when you win so even uh, we had this big stop losses i don't know how many pips was it 291 pips min minus 140 pips minus 98 pips minus uh, 179 pips so my loss in the end uh, if i count with the swap as well minus the swap so my loss in this month was 36 dollars 36 dollars you see i lost just 36 dollars if I will be using the same position size, I would lose $250. Yeah. So from my, from my account is around eight, uh, almost nine thousand. So thirty-six dollars, I lost actually zero point three percent from the account from these trades, which is still good. It's still good. If if you're not losing, uh, if you're not losing uh, ten percent. 15% of the account it's still good so this money management still keeps me in the game I can continue and uh, even uh, even the, the game is hard now I, ca I, ca I will not stop yeah so as I was speaking about this uh, uh, about this uh, Position sizing, how to do it? I know that some people still don't know how to do it, so I want to show you. Uh, if I, if I will send you, if I will send you the uh, signal, which will, which you will receive. For example, this one, yes, Euro JPY sell limit, yes, and you have a, you have an entry price, you have a stop loss. So here in the brackets, I'm adding the pips. What is uh, how many pips is it to the stop loss? It's important. This is how I decide uh, what position size I will add. So what I do here on my website, this one www.fxhunter.com, in the FX tools and the contacts, there is uh, this risk management uh, position size calculator. So what you have to do when you receive the signal, you will look first of all for the pips. Yeah. And you will add the uh, you will add the uh, your currency of your account. Let's say euro. You will add your account balance. There is uh, what you want to want to want to add. Let's say one and a half percent. Stop loss in the pips. This is the number from the brackets. And the currency pair. Uh, where is the trade? So euro JPY. And I put the calculate, and it will give me the position size. Guys, I know some of you have a small account, so smaller accounts, so let's say 500 or um, something like that, even smaller. Um, if you cannot, uh, if you cannot risk less than 2% per the trade, uh, because sometimes, uh, let's say, if the stop loss is 300 pips, that means that uh, uh, on the 0 0.01 uh, position size, you will risk. Uh, you will risk uh, thirty dollars, and if your if your account is a uh, three hundred, then it's ten percent per trade. You must calculate this. Then 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 don't take a trade. Skip it. Skip this trade. If it means that uh, you will lose ten percent of the account, don't take a trade. Yeah, it's very important. So yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, Let's have a look uh, what I'm planning to trade uh, this week. So um, uh, I will be looking for the shorts uh, on the euro card because we have this nice, uh, nice engulfing candle. So I will be waiting for the for the correction and then I will enter the trade and I will be targeting uh, this area, this uh, big volume uh, area. So I think the market could come here. The next trade will be the Euro New Zealand dollar. Uh, this is where we where we get uh, the stop loss. But uh, I did the analysis and uh, news. I think um, 
per the, per the commitment of traders uh, report uh, euro is strengthening and uh, but it will be doing some correction before more up move so and the new zealand uh, dollar will be strengthening now so I, I will be taking the longs on the euro new zealand dollar but first i want to wait for the correction euro jpy we are actually in the trade uh, so i'm looking to drop and then i will be looking for the longs uh, if i will see the bullish activity um, around the 132 area <coughs> Sorry guys, uh, Euro out, I will be looking for the longs, Canadian dollar JPY, um, I'm still I'm still bullish on the JPY uh, fundamentally and I think it's going to be strengthening a lot, especially next year the JPY will be dominating the markets, this is what I think uh, per all my analysis, uh, my fundamental analysis and uh, the commitment of traders report uh, the activity on the Japanese and uh, say, say so so I have to follow and now I see the cat uh, cat strengthening so uh, we will see where it will come and then um, then I will be taking the shorts out cat uh, as I said we have this trade uh, we are in the long but uh, somewhere on the low and I said that I expect the market to come back and then uh, uh, I think it come, uh, comes down to this area 0 0.94 so I'll be looking for the shorts. Australian dollar Swiss franc, uh, it's uh, a shame uh, I had a nice trade here, I, I closed that. But it happens and uh, I will be looking for the longs uh, if they come into area 0.3 but uh, first if they reverse, if market reverse up then I will be looking for the shorts. GBP USD, this GBP cut sorry, um, yet yeah, here I will be looking for the longs uh, but uh, first uh, probably I will take a short because this is very nice uh, very nice engulfing candle this is the formation I'm actually not trading the formations too much because uh, actually the formations uh, are created by price section and price section is created by supply and demand uh, zones the demand uh, trading so uh, I'm not trading the formations but this this one the, the engulfing is one strong one uh, it's actually not formation it's candle yeah so it's strong candle which uh, which tells that uh, it, which is changing the changing the market conditions and uh, we can see with a nice high volume so here uh, okay I will be taking the longs uh, in down uh, they will be a uh, this long we should, could, could have a much higher take profit but first I will probably go for the shorts as well so I will see on the Monday how the market will open and uh, I will, then I will be looking uh, to, to short this trap, this pair, uh, if there will be the conditions uh, and all my all my conditions of my strategy will be met. GBP JPY, we are in the short, but uh, in the long term I will be looking for the longs uh, somewhere around this area, around 1.8, 1.48. GBP USD, I will be longing. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. This this market is not moving nowhere. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's too early, too short, too early, too long. But uh, it looks like uh, for the short now because uh, we can see that they br break this uh, trend line and they doing the retest. So um, I'm more now for the short. So yeah this could be could be short here this could be short this could be short but uh this is too quick to this could be too quick decision uh, uh, I, I think this is now might be now it's better to do nothing uh, I don't like to short the, short the uh, market uh, in the middle of uh, nowhere I'm like to buying or shorting on the highs or lows so I will not be look, taking this trade we'll see GBP out uh, this market it, it has so strong uh, bullish trend uh, the uh, 
this the trend line is still respected yeah and uh here's yeah i expect it to go very very high very high so i will be looking definitely for the longs but the lower it's too early too long and uh, this could be as well the nice short uh, because as again we have the engulf yeah bam bam so um there could be a short first of all as well euro chef i was speaking about the uh, euro frank uh, last week um the, i was looking i said that i was looking for the break of this trend line and uh then i will be looking for the retest and maybe i will i will short it australian dollar jpy um i'll be looking for shorts gold uh, we had a nice trade nice entry here i'm very happy that finally we entered the gold because i was looking uh, uh, I, I was missing always to enter the enter the uh, gold but uh, uh, that this is uh, how the patient uh, help us uh, so we we was waiting and we entered here nicely on the on the almost not almost but on the uh, very low uh, of this consolidation and guys look at the volume what happened here on the gold yeah so this is uh, and the market went down with the low volume so it says it's, that it's a pure manipulation and on the on the low a lot of massive volume yeah massive volume was here so they bought it here with the massive volume and uh, i think the gold will go up a lot now and it's this is perfect this is mostly what's happening uh, when the market is in the consolidation then they then they manipulate the price to get out uh, to create more liquidity and get the stop losses of the of the of the bulls and uh, then they will then they will go up this is i think what is going to happen uh the silver we have almost the stop loss we have almost the stop loss uh, actually but the trade is actually still running uh, uh if we look uh, if we look to the to the um, to the platform we can see that uh, uh this is gold this is silver this is silver uh, we can see that we had uh, almost the stop loss. So look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So it was like uh, one pip. So we will see. Yeah. But uh, I see nice possibility that the market could go reverse now because uh, market was dropping. Then uh, we had some uh, stopping volume here. Uh, we have this uh, again the dip with the rising volume yeah and then again another dip with the rising volume so this is this is nice bullish uh, bullish activities number i think the gold should go up uh silver should go up now but uh, we will see if they may maybe maybe they will take our stop loss uh, and then it will go up it could happen as well yeah new zealand dollar uh, i will be looking for the shorts uh, for sure uh, new zealand dollar jpy as well the shorts Shorts are what I'm looking for. Yeah, USD cat. Uh, I will be looking for the longs when it drops uh, uh, much lower. I will see this trade. I will uh, be adjusting as well. Okay, guys. So this is uh, for this week. This is for me. From me, everything. Uh, I want to thank you. Thanks everyone who is uh, with me with the, in the channel. Uh, even the results uh, wasn't uh, so good this month, but. Uh, as you can see, I'm I'm not trying to manipulate the numbers. Uh, I'm not trying to make it sexy for everyone. You know, I know this uh, my trading style. I'm definitely not the best trader on the world, and I don't think that uh, I am. Uh, and uh, I don't need to prove anyone that um, uh, that I'm best. I'm of course not best. There is much better traders, and uh, but I'm trying to. Uh, do the the trading technique so I'm actually so I'm actually uh, trading for the living and now living for the trading yeah so that's why I'm not doing the intraday trades too much that's why I'm not uh, posting you the signals as buy now sell now because then it's crazy I mean 
I saw uh, I saw a lot of signal channels, and uh, I cannot imagine how the how the people how the followers can trade this. I don't know if these traders are thinking, but uh, this is crazy. And this is almost impossible to buy buy now, sell now, hundred hundred trades per day. I think not uh, the normal person who's going to the work cannot do it. it. Cannot do it. It's impossible. Even sometimes I think that uh, I'm posting too much, too much editing of the trades, and uh, I know it's difficult. Uh, but uh, this is what is trading about. We must be flexible and changing the our positions and uh, our entries as the market moves. And sometimes it moves a lot, sometimes not. Uh, Okay guys, so this is everything for me for this week and uh, I wish you have a nice rest of the rest of the Sunday and I'll see you in the channel. Bye bye.